So I was thinking to myself recently that, wow, I've been in the state of Florida for two years now, and I thought it would be a cool video idea if I got to discuss my time in Florida, me pursuing my crocodilian career, and if Florida really is worth the hype in terms of being kind of the reptile center of the United States. So before we get all into that, let me explain why I want to move to Florida in the first place. Ever since I was three years old, I knew without a shadow of a doubt that I want to work with crocodilians. Um, that has been the animal I have been obsessed with. Days as a child were spent reading books about them, going to the zoo, watching documentaries. Literally, I would pick up my like plush crocodiles and put it in front of the TV, put on the Crocodile Hunter, and I would copy Steve Irwin as he's wrestling crocodiles with my toys. The very first time I ever jumped on an alligator, the guy who watched me literally said I did it perfectly, and that's when I was 12 years old. And I credit that to literally watching Steve Irwin jump on crocodiles over and over and over again. So as I said, this was my obsession. This was my life. Like I said, I knew since then, since the age of three years old, that I want to work with these animals as a career. There was only one problem. I lived in California. I lived on the opposite side of the country away from any native crocodilians. So in summer of 2022, I decided to move to Florida because I knew that I had to move to a state that had crocodilians. And Florida has both alligators and crocodiles, so naturally it's just a place to be. And not only that, there are a ton of reptile people. There are people that are biologists, zoo people, influencers, you name it. Florida, to me, was always the hot spot for the reptile world, or at least in the United States. So, as I said, in the summer of 2022, I moved down there, and my hope was literally just to get connected and find some way to start working with them. Literally within a week, um, I got a pretty cool opportunity. So a week after I moved here, a friend of mine that worked in the apartment complex I lived in told me that there was an alligator on the property in a pond. So I dropped what I was doing and I rushed over there and I didn't see the alligator at first. So I started doing a baby alligator call, which literally sounds like this. As I'm doing this call, the county trapper arrives. His name is Ron Sanderson. and. He doesn't know who I am, and all he's thinking to himself is, who the heck is this idiot trying to catch my alligator? So I get to talking with Ron uh, after he sees me, and I explain to him that I'm not some nut job trying to steal his alligator he has a permit for. Um, I'm just trying to look for it. And that I actually just moved to Florida because I want to work with crocodilians. And he literally responds with, you know what? You can help me. So he told me about the path to become an alligator trapping agent of his, which would allow me to work with alligators he has permits for. And it's just been such a cool and exciting experience. I've had a ton of fun alligator trapping and it's just been such a great learning experience. Ron has been working with alligators for over 40 years and he just takes these animals very seriously. He respects them. He wants to do everything in a safe manner. So I literally thank God that I met Ron and not some random nut job. Ron is just such an amazing guy in general, a really great person, and we've gone on a lot of cool, I could say, adventures with him. Um, a lot of fun moments, uh, some hectic, but you know what, as I say, uh, we stay alive, dry, and we have a lot of digits, so I say that's pretty good in my book. Ron is also giving me some cool opportunities in the sense that I've got to meet some pretty cool people. I actually got to go with Chris and Gabby, who I'm sure you know. Uh, to go try and get some alligators, and it was a pretty cool experience uh, with them. And some of you may know this, but Ron is actually one of the trappers that has been selling alligators to Chris and Gabby Sanctuary Bellowing Acres. Another cool thing that I got to do was be part of this filming experience with Brie Gabrielle, who was a former Miss Florida, and she does a lot of outdoor stuff. The focus of the video was to try and capture some nuisance alligators. Unfortunately, we didn't capture any alligators during filming, but it was still a really cool and fun experience. Getting away from the alligator trapping for a bit, um, I was actually able to help John Brugan along with his wife Jen, who if you don't know are associated with the St. Austin Alligator Farm, because they were actually writing a book at the time. So this was around September to October of 2022, and at this point, I had just released the physical version of my book, What Began Wrong About Crocodilians, on Amazon. John Brugan was actually one of the people and experts I contacted for help on the book, and once I got it finished, I sent a digital copy to him as well as a link to buy it on Amazon if you wanted to as a thank you for helping me with the book. Uh, we got a little bit of a discussion through email because he was actually writing a book of his own, he told me, and he was wondering about the publishing process I went through to release the book. So we talked a little bit, but some time passed and I was actually in a chemistry class and I was bored out of my mind, you know, I was just kind of waiting for the class and 
and I see this notification go off on my phone and I didn't really look at it and I didn't really look at the email but I just kind of glanced at it really quick and all I could see was that it was from John Brugan and it says, Jake, I just got a hard copy of your book. Very nicely done. That alone made my day to be honest because I had been working on that book since my junior year of high school. So to have this higher up in the croc world said that I did a good job working on that book, it, it just meant a lot to me because it was like, okay, I actually made something of quality. It wasn't just like a you know, random piece of crap. Um, but anyway, so I uh, read through the email more once I got out of class and uh, Bruggen was actually wondering if I could get in contact with my graphic designer and ask if he was interested in working on Bruggen's book. The graphic designer for my book was actually my best friend Brandon and I actually got Brandon connected with Bruggen and Brandon got to work on Jen and John Bruggen's book. John and Jen ended up releasing their book, A Guide to Identifying Crocodilians of the World, this year on Amazon with a hardcover copy released recently. Link in the description if interested. One of the cooler things having this relationship with John Bruggen though was I was actually given the opportunity to set up a booth at an upcoming croc fest at St. Augustine Alligator Farm to sell my book. Uh, respectfully, I ended up declining that offer because I had never been to a croc fest before and I really wanted to just you know enjoy the experience. But I think John Bruggen still this day for giving me the opportunity and once again for me it was like okay if the director of the St. Augustine Alligator Farm you know likes my book enough that he would allow me to set up a booth to sell it at Crocfest with a bunch of other croc people um, that was just really cool and encouraging to me. Speaking of Crocfest let me explain what that is. Crocfest is a fundraiser that happens twice every year in Florida. Um, different zoos host it so it can be in St. Augustine Alligator Farm, Zoo Tampa, Gatorland just to name a few facilities. Um, they host it and it's literally just this fundraising effort for different crocodilian conservation efforts. Um, it could be on Cuban crocodiles, and Garial, Black Cayman, uh, you name it, uh, Crocfest tries to help fundraise it. That winter Crocfest in 2022 was actually the first Crocfest I ever went to in St. Augustine and I gotta say it was weird because there were so many people there that I had looked up to since I was a young child and actually seeing them in person was weird. I had seen these people, you know, on a TV screen for God knows how long. Not only was I seeing these people in person, I was actually having conversations with them. So it was very weird, but at the same time, very cool. I actually got this cool picture with Joe Wazalewski, and I'm sure a lot of people who've met him will say the same thing, but Joe Wazalewski is just such a nice guy. As I was talking to one of the guys who helped run Crockfest about my book, Kurt Harbsmeyer, Joe Wazalewski, as he's walking by us, points to me and says, he's going to be one of the next up-and-comers, which was very cool and nice for him to say. I've gone to more Crockfest since then, and to be honest, if you want to get connected in the croc world, or just beyond the croc world, just reptiles in general, or I'd even say animals in general, Crockfest is definitely a place to do that. You're going to meet a lot of good people throughout different types of fields with these animals. Sometime later, in 2023, I got to meet the San Fray River Turtle Project founder, Dr. Jerry Johnston, and Johnston is just such a great guy. He's just a nice guy, he wants to help you, and he is just, he's obviously passionate about his work. There's, there's no doubt about that. Um, Johnston's main thing is turtles, but we've chatted quite a bit about crocodilians. Uh, it was actually really cool to discover that Johnston was actually in my favorite crocodilian documentary growing up, Super Croc. Johnston was actually part of the team with Dr. Brady Barr as they were trying to capture huge American crocodiles in Costa Rica. I actually met Johnston in my zoology class that I was taking in college as he was the professor. And over the time, you know, she started to learn that I was a crocodilian guy. I actually got to discuss and lecture to the class about how to find the length of an American alligator based on the skull. It's a huge American alligator skull and we actually were able to find out that the animal was around 13 feet in length. Um, it was funny because Johnston literally told the class that whatever Jake says is going to be on the final. And it actually ended up being an extra credit question, the equation I used for how to find the length of an American alligator skull. So, that was pretty cool, um, but J Johnson is just like, like I said, just such a great guy, and he just really encourages people that have strong passions for reptiles. I got to work with this project for a bit, which focuses on the turtles living in the San Fe River, and it was very fun to say the least. The project is made up of really good people, and it was very nice working with the other reptile nerds. 
Um, one of the main things this project is known for is the collaboration of citizens with scientists for the turtle surveys. People can help in several ways, with the funnest being able to actually get in the water and catch the turtles. One of the mottos for the project is literally sea turtle, catch turtle. Being there for the day and to be part of the effort to help understand these turtles living in the Sanford River is a great experience and I recommend it to anyone and everyone who has a chance to take part in it. There are other things I could discuss that I've done in Florida, but in terms of reptile specific things, um, those have been the main points. To anyone out there that is considering moving to Florida to pursue their career with reptiles and to further it, I would say do it. To be honest, um, I'm sure if I stayed in California, you know, things would be fine, but I wouldn't be in the position I am right now in terms of my career if I didn't make that move to Florida. So anyone out there that is wondering if they should take that leap of faith and move to the state to pursue their career with reptiles, I would say do it. Um, my only advice is that one, you should try to think strategically where in Florida you want to go. Um, depending on you know if it's a particular job that you want or if you want to work more out in the field. Um, but then secondly, and this is the main thing, there's a lot of good reptile people out there, but there are definitely some crazy reptile people as well. So you definitely want to keep in mind who you're associating yourself with. In closing, yes, Florida is worth the hype when it comes to the reptile people. And it's going to be really cool seeing how this continues on for me. I'm still early on in my career um, and I'm sure that more things are going to happen, more things are going to change, but I got to say, so far so good. So um, I'll see you guys later and uh, thanks for watching. Learn more about the animals you just saw by my book, What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians. It examines claims of giant crocodiles, a World War II massacre, their regenerating tails, alligators and sewers, their record land speeds, and more. The book looks at a variety of subjects many people, including experts, get wrong about these animals, and I desperately wanted to dispel the myths that have persisted so long. Buy What We Get Wrong About Crocodilians in physical or digital formats. Link in bio, comments, or description to buy.